Hello, my crafty friends and creatives from around the globe. Welcome to Heather and Jan's studio, or welcome back if you've been here before. Uh, DJ here in the studio, and today we are going to make some fun envelopes out of our scraps. And uh, just by looking at this, you can kind of get an uh, idea of what we're going to do, but we all have a lot of scraps, at least if you're watching this and you're into paper crafting, you have a lot of scraps. Um, and we always are looking for unique ways to use them. So we're going to turn them into bigger sheets that we can then turn into envelopes, or you could use these for journal covers. Uh, you can make tags out of them. You can make pockets out of them. You can use them like you would any other piece of paper. And all I did was sew these uh, together randomly, no real sewing skills involved here. Um, I'll take you over to the machine and I'll just run you through a little bit of what I did here. But honestly, you don't have to have uh, sewing skills to do what I did here. It's very messy. It's chaotic, which I absolutely love. So that's my style. Yours might be a little uh, more uniform and uh, you may do it your way. But to me, uh, threads hanging everywhere, kind of chaotic stitching is, is just so yummy to me. So um, I did these with a bunch of my scraps, same here. And as you can see, I then, um, you know, kind of embellished it and sewed it up the sides, added a little Velcro closure here. And on this one, I just added um, a little kind of butterfly embellishment, which is also serving as my closure here. And a little butterfly kisses that I put on the end and the back is plain, but I could decorate that as well. Or I could put this down on a page and use this as a pocket or a tuck or whatever. Um, inside this one, if you can see, I don't know how the camera will show it, but I actually line this one uh, so that when I, uh, I'm putting stuff in, it's not jamming on those uh, rough edges because you know there's a lot of rough edges when you're sewing paper together and you know if you're sticking paper in it might get stuck on it this one I didn't do that with and I didn't feel that um, because I had like a bigger piece of paper that I was using in there I felt like this was going to be fine and these are really sturdy surprisingly um, I'm using similar weight papers for these, but I, I'm sure you can mix them up. This is a paperweight, like a copy paperweight, and um, there's some book pages in here. There's some uh, deli paper in mine, and like I said, I'll take you over to the machine now, and we'll just run through what I was doing randomly with my stitches, and um, and you'll see just how easy it is. And it doesn't matter. I mean, you can have multiple sized papers. I'll just show you here. Um, like you got a, I've got a little one here, a little one here. Um, I've got a very long one here and, um, you can like underneath I have random pieces. So, uh, it really doesn't matter the size of your pieces though. Really super tiny ones probably wouldn't work out because you'd have a lot of, it, it'd get more and more fiddly. Not that you wouldn't be able to do it. It's just that it would probably get pretty fiddly. So let's jump over to the machine and I'll show you, uh, you know, I'll start one. We won't do a whole sheet because they take a little while, but uh, you'll get the gist of it just by seeing me um, get started with it. All right, so I'll meet you over at the machine. All right, so welcome to the sewing machine. I have a Brother CS6000i. I've had it for a number of years, and like I said, I use it for kind of everything, and uh, I've been sewing with paper forever. I've had the same needle in here for years. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but hey, you know, it works for me. All right, so I have two pieces of paper here. Uh, I am just going to lay one over the other, and I'm going to just kind of put my... What do I want to do here? I want to cover up that, that straight edge. I don't want any straight edges. They're just a little too neat for me. So all I'm doing then is I'm going to... Um, and I'm sorry about the lighting here. This is like a weird setup for me and it's almost impossible with the overhead lights to get any good lighting here. I'm hoping you get the gist of this. And if you don't like the sound of the sewing machine, um, you know, just turn your sound down. You'll get an idea of what I'm doing by watching. Uh, but I'm going to talk over and you'll hear me. But if that bothers you or you're sensitive to the sound, 
turn your sound down now and just kind of get an idea of what I'm doing by watching. All right, so I'm gonna piece these two pieces together. One's overlaying the other slightly. I'm just gonna put them under my foot, put my foot down. And then um, I'm not even gonna back stitch or anything. I, I don't think you need to do that unless you're doing a lot of straight pieces in a row and you wanna make sure that the ends don't unravel. But in mine, I just kind of keep going around and around. So I think I kind of stitch over a lot of my stitches anyway. I have this on a straight stitch. Uh, this is a 3.5 uh, on my machine for the, the length of the stitch. And I'm just gonna stitch down this and I'm gonna kind of follow, uh, gen just casually follow this line. I'm not gonna be too specific. And here we go. All right, now when I get to the end, I can, you know, kind of backstitch a little if you want, take this out like this and then flip it around or add another piece to the end. So let me grab, let's grab this one. Same verse, same as the first. piece of this coffee dyed typing paper or um, not typing paper goodness do they make typing paper anymore um, <laughs> this is uh, tracing paper that I have tea dyed or coffee dyed and baked all right so here we go And did I put that over that other piece? I sure did, but I don't care. I think that looks kind of cool. And now some of the things I like to do is um, most machines have this back stitch for when you're back stitching. I like to hold on to it and hit my pedal because it, it goes all kind of crazy and I love that. So, all right, I'm probably breaking my machine, but you know what? I, I haven't had a problem yet. So we're just going to go, keep going with it. All right. Uh, I have another piece here and maybe what I'll do is I'll go down to the bottom here now and I'll kind of start down here and we'll add in, uh, another piece of this coffee dyed paper and then I'll start stitching up. All right, and all I'm doing is put my needle down. It's down in the paper. I lift my presser foot and I kind of come back down. And now um, I can go with another piece of paper um, if I wanted to right under this because I have a straight edge again and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna kind of, let's see what I can get here. I'm just gonna lift this up, put it up to my needle there and then just kind of fit it in there. I don't have to be real, you know, real specific with it. I don't think it needs to all line up. As a matter of fact, I don't want it to. And then I'm coming over here and I just want to get it all attached. Um, let's go down a little. We're going to go over that corner right there. We're going to come down to the edge of this one. And I'm only doing this because I, I don't want to keep taking it out of my machine. So I'm just going to keep piecing on pieces here. Uh, until I decide that I have a big enough piece to work with. And am I going over all these other things? I sure am. Do I care? No. I just want to get it to a point where I am actually, uh, you know, have a big enough piece to work with. And the end result is always really good. So I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, come back up here to the edge of this sheet. I'll do a couple more and then we'll we'll go make an envelope. Uh, I got this one. Oh, I'm gonna come in here and cover up here. And if you have, you know, longer strips all the same size, then just use all them and line them up together. That's perfectly fine, right? And maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll come down here and I'll come across a little. All this side. Come 
come down this one. Maybe we'll do a little funky stitch. What do I got? Got one of these. I can do a uh, zigzag. You know, and you can mix your stitches. No rules, just fun. I think that's like the old Chuck E. Cheese logo. So you, you get an idea of what we're doing here, okay? And then when you're done, you start growing, you know, a bigger piece of paper. And what I did find was, you know, my pieces were getting so big, I had to kind of curl them so they'd fit through my machine, but that was fine. It's paper and it folds well. All right, so now that you kind of get an idea of what we did, I'm going to take you back to the desk and let's make an envelope. All right, so here's the piece I did. And, um, you know, I have some edges that are kind of pulling up. I didn't do this because we'd be there forever, but I could go back over that. I could put my zigzag stitch across the edge, around that edge so that it holds it down. Um, I could put another piece of paper over top of it. There's really a lot of different things you can do here. Um, as you can see, I kind of went in all directions here. Um, I have a piece sticking up here, but I can, and I can glue it down or I can easily cut it off. It's not a big deal. And now all I want to do is make an envelope out of this. So very simple envelope. Um, we want to get a straight edge on one of these edges and this is the straightest of edges. So what I'll do is then I'll cut down this side and I'm going to get it up as close as I can to this line here. Now all my pieces are hanging over this line and I want to make sure of that because I want to make sure that I don't have something like kind of tucked, you know, beyond, behind it so that I, I want to get a straight edge <laughs> ultimately. Um, I'm using my, my knife here. Um, it seems to cut through the threads well. You can do this with uh, a pair of scissors, obviously, uh, whatever you have. Now, it does get a little jagged at times because I'm pulling on what is not very strong paper and the threads are kind of yanking with it. So just, you'll get, you'll get used to it. And you know what, if this tears a little, I actually, I'm not mad about it. I can um, use this as the side or the top. I could put a piece of lace over that. It doesn't matter. We'll figure out a way to make it work. All right, so now I have a semi straight edge there, right? And now I want to get something over here. So I'm going to take it to, this is the shortest point on this side. So I'm just going to um, start there and go down this way and make sure I get everything in. And this edge is on the straight edge. So hopefully I'll get like a nice straight uh, rectangle here when I'm done. Take this off. threads there. All right, there's that one. Now we can go for the next one. And this, I have no measurements here. I'm just kind of going, working with the piece that I have. So um, I suggest you do the, the same thing because these envelopes don't really, unless you need something that's a specific size, obviously you do, you know, what you need to do but I don't, I don't need a specific size in this case. So I'm just gonna work with what I got. All right, so this is all lining up perfect. Well, not too perfect. We don't want it too perfect. All right, now come on, over, over. Yeah, and this piece, it, I, I, you know, it takes a little while, but it doesn't take too long. I think most of the time I spent was just trying to figure out what paper I wanted to use. You know, because I don't, I didn't want two pieces of the same together. All right, and there I have a, a nice, neat rectangle now. And here, here, this was the best part. Well, one of the best parts. Um, these strips that I'm cutting off, 
I can just go back now and reuse these in my next piece. I can just stitch these together. And so I'm not really wasting anything. Uh, you know, I could, I could weave them and then stitch them. There's a lot of different things you could do so that you can um, make the most out of your scraps. All right, so we have this done. And all I'm gonna do to make my pocket is, I'm gonna make that the top because I think I will add a little piece of lace up there. Although now my butterfly, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's see, let's see how this will work. I think I'll just take another scrap and cover that edge a little. All right, so I'm just folding it. And you wanna crease it, be careful when you're doing this because you could rip some of the papers that you have here. And we don't wanna rip them, we just got done sewing them. Though you could just take it back to the machine and sew it. All right, so let me get a piece of paper. All right, have this little scrap. So try not to move your, the camera here. I'm just gonna cut a piece off to glue onto that edge because it's a little wonky. So it's about that big, right there. That's good enough. That should cover this little bit of wonkiness here, or I could glue it here. I think I'll glue it on that the back side. Then I get to see all this loveliness on the front. So we need it to be that's all right. I'll glue it and then I'll cut it. Why not? And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna glue stick it. I'm gonna sew it and then I'm gonna cut it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll show you envelope. There's that. Let's line this side up. Perfect. Good, that'll just kind of secure that a little. Let me take it to the machine, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna stitch right across here. There we go, fixed. It's ratty tatty, but it's secure. And I can just cut off some of these random edges. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, now I'm just gonna fold over this part. I wanna get that butterfly in there. And so that was just a piece I stamped off on or I got a bad stamp on. You know, like sometimes you stamp and it doesn't stamp all the way. So I just found that in the scrap bin and there it is. Okay, so that's that. And now um, you can continue, you can go sewing around here. You know, you can kind of do some stitching around here. Um, I went ahead and on this one, I kind of just did a, a zigzag stitch across the front here, which I'll probably do on this one also. And then the next step is to just sew our pocket together. I didn't even glue it. I sewed it. Um, with the sewing machine and just did a quick zigzag stitch and it is not neat at all and I like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let me take it over to the machine, I'll stitch it and then we'll embellish it. There we go. All right, I did a little bit of a decorative stitch here. If your machine doesn't have decorative stitches, don't do a decorative stitch. You could put some lace here, that would be pretty. I stitched, I straight stitched the sides of these, um, this one, as opposed to doing the zigzag stitch. So that is that. And now we can add some decorations. So what do we wanna add? Well, let's see what's on the desk. I have this on the desk. Don't want that. I have this. That's pretty. I can even put that down there. No, I kind of like it here. All right, let's glue that on. Which way does it go? That's a bouquet. Let's put it this way. This way, the bouquet is not upside down. And we'll glue it with the art glitter glue. Because it's thin and it dries fast and we're on camera. Well, I'm on camera. I don't know if you're on camera. Are you on camera? Do you want to be on camera? Okay, 
there's that. I don't want to cover up too much of that decorative stitching. That's nice. And here's the thing. If you put something on it and you don't like it, don't use it. <laughs> We've made this from scraps. All right, I have some washi. What, what, what do I have? Oh, I have this one that has these pretty deer. Maybe we'll add some green. That's not a deer. So we're just gonna add some of this washi because it's got kind of like a little pop of color here. So I am going to, let's see, where do I want it? About there. We'll put that there like so. I'll cut it and then glue it because washi never stays down. I think is the purpose of washi to be removable. Put you over there. We'll use you later. And then I'm just gonna glue my washi down. Now it won't come up. Watch. Okay. As long as I get the ends, some of the bigger sections, it'll be good. Just don't want those ends coming up. Okay, so there's that. Got that. I think I have a number circle somewhere. I have to have a, a number somewhere. I would like a circle, I think. These are all my kind of labels. Ooh, I like this one. Will that fit? Yeah, I don't like the color though. Mm -hmm, we're back to that. We're the indecisiveness. Yes, yes, yes. Uh. Oh, what's, what are you? You're a moon. No. Nah. Get that three six. All right, you know what I'll do? I will get some black soot ink and we'll just make it a different color these away. Um, a couple of people asked about these ephemera holders. I have a couple of videos on how to make them. These papers are from Shabby Dabby Doodah. It is, um, oh goodness, I can't think of the name of the kit now. Uh, something roses, um, I think. But anyway, you go to her Etsy shop and you'll find them. Um, but I also have a video on how I made that and how I made this ephemera holder. So if you look through my videos, there's not that many. I just, um, I haven't been doing YouTube very long, but you can find them and uh, make your own. I love them. I make different ephemera holders all the time. As a matter of fact, um, if you made these a little shorter, you could use these as ephemera holders. Why not? There's no rules. Not in my craft room. Now you can't spit on the floor. Don't do that. Um, actually, maybe off to the side like that. What do you think? I think so. Let's do that. And I just put a little black so it would stand out a little more. I thought it was a little too light. So I just wanted to give it a little more pop, grunginess. There. I like that like that. And then our little butterfly is there. And we can make a little closure. Um, I could put a word on here. Let me get a word. Or actually, I have this number. See, these are too many numbers. Not really. There's never too many numbers. Let's do the black on this one too, and then we'll have a matching pair. Don't know where this number came from. It was just laying on my desk, sorry. I download so much stuff. <laughs> Terrible. I don't need any more craft supplies. I definitely don't need any more digitals. All right, I'm gonna put you there. And then we're gonna do a little closure with some of these um, that little Velcro things. 
I got these at Hobby Lobby, but they also have them at Joann's or most selling shops. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, and they're sticky on one side and they just kind of hold it down. I just stick them together and then I stick one side down. So that's the sticky side of the other one. And I just go like that and then it's attached. And then I will disconnect them and press really hard so they stick. And that's that. And now that one is done. And as I say, um, you know, you could probably also use these as journal covers, you know, they'd make cool journal covers like this could be the front of the cover and you can decorate it. Um, and you can reuse the pieces you cut off. So from scraps, I now have three fun envelopes that I can use in my journals or for happy mail. I would definitely, um, I wouldn't mail these per se, cause they'd probably get torn up, but I could put these in another envelope and then fill them with goodies and mail them out to some friends. I hope you liked the video today. Let me know if you make these. Share them with me on Instagram. I love to see all your makes at Hither and Yon Studios. And uh, I hope you'll leave me some comments below uh, what you think about these envelopes. And if you're going to try it yourself, give me a like and a thumbs up, a subscribe, wherever you are. <laughs> um, it really helps my channel grow. So thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next, next video. Have a great rest of your day or night.